<laughs> well, Brock's like, I like, bro. I like, yeah, our life keeps Come going on. on. I'm over, well, I lived in Soundview. I lived in Kingsbridge. I was born and raised there my whole life. I lived in 149. 149 what? Fox. Oh, word? Yeah. Well, I was at the, I'm further down the 161 in Prospect. So. Oh, yeah. Fox. My grandma lived over there in Kelly. Yeah. Fox, you said Kelly? Yeah, my grandma lived in Kelly yeah, Street. I know exactly yeah. where that's at. Because I went <laughs> to school, PS130, right there on Longwood. And uh, oh. I know if you go all the way down, you meet Fox. Um, yeah. I want to say, nah, that's Longwood. That's not Westchester. Westchester would be under the L. But um, yeah, definitely sound. Yeah, I went to PS. I went to PS twenty five. Um, and I went to one sixteen. MS one sixteen. No, where that was at? That was right there in Innerville. That's what I said. Oh, Innerville. All right, yeah. That See, big... Innerville was one stop from me. Well, yeah. the big pun wall is between. Yeah, yeah, right there. That's where my uh, grandma so, lives. So yeah, so yeah, probably like we right having a Bronx reunion right now, baby. Right, right. <laughs> Oh, so, yeah, Will, yeah. you didn't know he was from the Bronx? Huh? Nah, I didn't know that. Oh, so no. you, <laughs> that's, why I said, from, that's why I said I, I hit my wallet because the Bronx was in the house. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, did, I did uh Soundview uh, summer stage one year with uh, uh, Peter Guns, Lord Tariq, Corey. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, you were in a group of Corey, back. right? Huh? You were in a group of Corey, right? Yeah, I got Militia right here. That's my brother. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, you Militia gang? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's I was crazy. well when I was when I was pop dollars, I was super, you know, but that's family though. That ain't like I said, man, just because I got Christ don't mean that, you know. You know what's interesting is that um a brother from our church, uh his name is JC, he would invite Peter Guns to our church. I went to Fordham Manor for a long time while I was over there. Yeah, and Uncle Peter, Uncle Peter super atheist. Yeah, but he would come out. He would come out with his boy JC, and they would come to church. Like he'll invite them, and then That's at that time, you know, we were doing the gospel rap, and he's like, well, "Let me hear what these young boys got to do." You know what I mean? And he was like, listening. He's like, "All right, all right, all right." <laughs> but yeah. at that time, he was so focused on Corey. Like yeah. Corey was his was his. You know what I mean? That was his. <laughs> nah, definitely. Yeah, I just heard back to that. Uh, he he had told one of my mans too that I was going hard. I ain't get to holler at him yet. I spoke to Guns yesterday, um, Corey. So, you know, but my my duty is to just go hard for the kingdom. Uh, I don't think I would have vocal cords still if I didn't. So mm -hmm. I, it's really not up to me. Right. Um, that's why a lot of my music is also geared towards being very bold. You may hear 92% of my songs, maybe 95, where I say Jesus Christ. Yeah. Um, I'm not really into the business of just rapping about God. I think that's the easy way out. I think uh, the world doesn't receive Christ. So in, in return, people want to be received, which is okay, but not when it overrides you having to take the same kind of persecution that Christ did. People tend to shy away from that. And I'm that's what really makes me want to go is when people go, yo, cause not for nothing, I just never heard nobody really rap about. It's some great rappers, though, for Jesus. I just never heard. I feel like I'm in a lane by myself. And the way that I do it, I never really heard nobody really boast about Christ in that kind of way. They do it, though. There's some, I think Ishan is dope. And I'll give you a story. Like, when I first, when God first sat me down and said, this is what it is, I didn't think it was possible. I didn't think how it was going to sound. I'm like, yo, I might as well just go preach because... Ain't no way. Like, what? Them rap? Jesus? And I'm going through the YouTube, and I'm just trying to, you know, get familiar with the people who do it. Right. And I'm like, because I know I can rap. Like, I, music is like first nature to me. So I'm like, yo, I right, cool. And I'm looking. Everything I'm seeing, I'm like, ah, nah. Then Ishan, uh Testify came on. Nighttime, I see diamonds in the sky. Daytime, I see sunlight shining bright. When I heard that, I said, who this? Like, it sounded like Alchemist did the beat. And mm. right when I heard that record, I was ready to go back to recording. God had sat me down for months on top of months. I had to really learn him, not from the way that, yeah, I got my own relationship with God. Nah, this is a little different. Because if you're speaking for me, you can't go in with your emotions. You can't go in with emotions at all. 
And that's why I don't, I got a lot of records I never drop yet, but I always make sure that it is okay for me to drop it and my spirit, the one God put in me is okay with it. And he give me the okay that I could drop it. I'm not just recording what I want to record and yeah, let's just put it out. Nah, you know what I'm saying? So, so how was that? How was that transition? Cause you, you were rhyming for the world, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then that just like, like the Lord just came in and stopped that. It was like, well, like what I'm was your tell you, dad, my fault. Nah, what was your story? Uh, story's long, but what I will say, bro, I <laughs> say this, right? I say, um, before God sat me down, I already started to make the transition unknowingly. So I got a record called uh, Really, R-E-A-L-L-Y, Real. I used to go by Pop Dollars, D-O-L-L-A-R-Z. So if you look up Pop Dollars, a lot of the stuff I took down, though. But majority of the stuff that's still up, you can see what I used to rap and all of that. But I went through a real harsh phase. I go to this first. So I did really real. I had a tape coming out called One of a Kind before the One of a Kind. Y'all heard if y'all heard it. Yeah. And this tape was full of a whole lot of lyrics geared towards your conscience and not on no new age. I'm talking about God, but in a way that I feel I related to God. Right. So I even prayed inside really real. Like it was different, but I think God already prepared me and, and I was already going through the transition. So when he sat me down, it wasn't too surprising. I felt more like I had a responsibility, but before he sat me down, I had went through just some craziness in life. Me and my ex split all kind of, I was wilding, mad different girls. I was doing everything I had no business doing, but I still felt like God had me by the collar. And uh, I had put a video out, girl was naked in it. Know what I'm saying? And we's in my pop's tub, my step pop's tub, all of that. Like, I ain't tell her to get naked, but she did it. And you a rapper, that's the image you going for. I wasn't going to stop her. But I was always the guy that couldn't be that guy because I had too much of a conscience. Mm -hmm. So while other rappers would go, yeah, that's a fact. Let's get it. I'm the guy like, yo, you sure you want to do that? You know what I mean? But yeah. you, you gonna go all the way or halfway. And you know, and God knows that. That's why I think if I'd have made it, I had records on BET jams, MTV jams videos, and I was running around 50 for a little minute. My manager was uh working for Fifth at the time for years on top of years. So I had, I stayed at Yayo Crib for like two nights. Uh, I'm saying that's the big bro. Like I had a lot going, you know what I'm saying? But I always was the dude that had the conscience. So even if somebody come with an opportunity, if it didn't sit right with what God put in me, I'm the first one. Like, nah, I'm good. I don't need it. Mm. Manager like, yo, what you mean you don't like, yo, what are we in it for? And that's when I had to start realizing, though, not that my manager don't love God, but my goals is different. I got to answer to him at the end of the day. So fast forward, I dropped the video and I felt a little... I felt this tug on my spirit, like I'm gonna be judged for that. And I'm not gonna be judged for it because I did it, but I'm gonna be judged for it because I put it for millions to see. Right. You push and it. And I always say that, like, I'd rather you destroy yourself than you, and you still will be judged, but I'd rather you destroy yourself than, than take, do the same thing the devil did. Right. You destroy what you had going and take everything with you. That's so you what you had. So you had you had that moment where you were like, uh uh, the same. Yeah, I called my manager. Keep I was like, I was like, yo, I don't think I should have did that. Manager was like, what you mean? I was like, I don't think I should have did that. I think that was, I think I'm just even my family was like, is he okay? Is everything all right with him? Because they wasn't used to me acting out in this manner. I always hung out with the gangsters. Um, you know what I'm saying? I had killers around me before kind of stuff. But the thing about it was I, I was Willie. Like they know me as pop, but my family, like that's Willie. Like yeah. why he doing that for? Yeah. And it was just like, I kind of was off the edge for a little minute. And I was just wild. I was in a place where I didn't care. I was so stressed and I just wanted everything now. 
And again, I still wasn't going to sit down with the devil and shake his hand, but that's where he gets you in a way where you don't think you're shaking his hand. So still loved God, still prayed with him or, or prayed to him, all kind of stuff. Um, but I was going through it. And then uh, God sat me down. I went through a crazy, crazy uh, situation. Had met this guy who I won't say his name. I'm pretty sure y'all don't know him, but I was driving Lyft one day. And I met him. We was talking. I was like, yo, what would you do if I was asking everybody, homeless people, everybody for wisdom? Because, you know, those are people that have been through life. You know what I'm saying? Drug addicts, all kind of people. Those are the people who know life. So, um, you know, I'm just asking them, like, what what, what could I do to, to, you know, get back my situation, my ex? Ah, ah. Like, I really wilded out because I was cheating on left and right. And they was giving me advice. But this one particular man, the conversation shifted to God. That's my combo. So we in the car. I'm like, yeah, nah, because uh, in Jesus, and it was cool. So when it was time for him to get out the car, I dropped him off by the laundromat. I got out. I said, yo, let me get your number. He was like, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take your number. And if God tell me to call you, I'm going to call you. Mm-hmm. I laughed. I said, all right, because I just knew me and God is there. And that's the faith I had. No matter where I was at, I'm God main man. Like, all right, cool. I'm cool with that. Drove off. I ain't speak to him in like a week. I've been going to the wild strip clubs. I just been bugging out. One night I went home, not home. I was at my man crib. Just hit the blunt. I say, yo, bro, can I, can I uh, stay in the, in the guest room? Cause I don't feel like driving home. He lived in Snellville and I had to go back to Latonia. So he was like, uh, yeah, Brody, you good, Brody. He from the Bronx. Um, you know what I'm saying? So Soundview and all that. So, I go in the room, close the door. I start reading my Bible because I'm at a point where I just felt like I felt conflicted in myself. Like something's not right. Like I'm bugging. It got to the point where I felt like God washed his hands. I wasn't even getting sleep paralysis no more. Like I was getting nothing, like nothing, like no discipline. I just felt like it felt too comfortable to do this stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, nah, that's when I knew like, yeah, you bugging out. I open a Bible app, I'm reading it. Then, you know, when you click a scripture, you could click uh, related and then you'll see everybody's notes on it. And I'm looking at everything. I feel like I'm in God's presence. I pray. I tell God, I'm sorry. I, I'm done. Everything. I'm willing to give it to you. I'm done. As soon as I went to lay down, I jumped into sleep paralysis. I was like, it's crazy. I looked to the window. It was a shadow figure with like a hat looking at me. Wow. And that boat was huh? wild. I said that butt was crazy. Yeah, it was wild because nah, he said that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so as that soon as I lay down, I'm like, I seen it, but I didn't get scared because I've been praying and reading my word for so long, so I felt nothing could happen to me. But then the sleep paralysis went for a little too long. Mm-hmm. And the more I looked at it, it got smaller. But then once I started to get a little worrisome, it started to get bigger. Poof. I'm out of the sleep paralysis. I smiled and I prayed and I thanked God. Not saying that God, at the end of the day, like I said, all powers ought to be submitted to God. And I feel like God can, his discipline, you should love it. Never abhor it. You know what I'm saying? So the next day, just like a week and a half later, I'm in lift, dropping these Indian ladies off. Who calls me? Yeah, uh, you dropped me to the laundry the other day. I thought it was another guy, and he left his bleach, and I used that bleach already. So I'm like, <laughs> like yeah, where my like, bleach at, yo? <laughs> yo Run your bleach. Told me. Told me. So I'm like, oh, I, and I'm now I'm that guy. I'm gonna buy a new bleach and bring it. I'm like, yo, bro. I say, yo, uh, I'm I'm on a ride now, but you know, let me call you back. He said, I, right. I'm in the car, and it hit me, boom. That ain't the bleach guy. That's the guy who you gave your number to. So I'm mm. like, called him back. He's like, Mr. Cater. I'm like, yeah. He was like, what's up? God told me to call you. So you want we could talk, meet up, however you want to do it. And from there, you know, it was wild to me because the night before, I just really poured my heart out and told God, mm. I'm done. Like, I just, mm. whatever you got. And he calls the next day. And mind mm-hmm. you, it ain't like he called me the day after he got my number and just said, yeah, right, I right. felt like God told me to call. Like, no, literally, God told me to call you right now, today. I'm calling. So I never met a dude like this, though, that 
And this is why I'm very wary when it comes to profits and all of this. Like, I'm not saying it can't happen, but you have a movement within the church who I won't say no denomination names, but they like to abuse these gifts. And right. I'm not judging them because, again, that brings disunity. But what I am saying is this is why in the New Testament you are able to judge these things. Right. Back then, it was different with the prophets. God spoke through them. He gave them the word through them because they had no Bible. They had the law, but they didn't have the Bible. You know what I'm saying? They knew what happened with Moses, but they didn't have what we have. You know what I'm saying? So you would have Samuel, I got a word from the Lord. You have Ezekiel, thus saith the Lord. Now, we want to say, thus saith the Lord, you got your Bible. You know what I'm saying? And anytime right. you get a word, it should always line up with the Bible. Fast. Anytime, once a man, because you got people that they deem they experience higher than the Bible. It's it's my it's my experience than the Bible. No, it's the, the Bible should define your experience. Your experience should never define the Bible. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So you hear that, Paula? <laughs> so <laughs> so from right there, it's like uh, everything he would say was spot on. You know, everything he he would tell me. It got to the point where. It was no longer him, but God would give me wild dreams. And they was just coming true, coming true. And I would start writing them down. And I'm like, yo, this is wild. But God doesn't always talk to us how we talk to us. Like right now, God could have y'all go to sleep tonight. And in a dream, you find yourself looking at a big iMac, right? And you in a conference call. But one of them boxes... Whatever box I am on yours, one of those boxes is a wolf. I'm just giving you a scenario. And you wake up like, yo, that's crazy. Yo, bro, all four of us, we was inside the uh, the chat talking, but one of the boxes was a wolf. And you'll be like, that's weird. But somebody might interpret that, that God is telling you that this gentleman y'all was talking to is not who you think he is. Right. You understand what I'm saying? I'm just giving right. you a scenario. Yeah, Nobody yeah. knows how God is going to talk to you, though. Yeah, yeah. But it was weird stuff that was happening. Like, weird. Like, like weird. Like, you just can't explain. It was just happening. So, um... So this gentleman know, started kind of mentoring you in a way. Right. But then I learned the Bible for myself. We had certain disagreements, but I would never, ever fix my face to say God don't use it. This gentleman lives his life in a way I've never seen <laughs> literally has nowhere to lay his head. He literally wakes up and follows what God tells him to do. Literally. Wow. Don't watch TV. If he watched TV or we ever went to the movies, me, his son, his wife, it's because God sent us go and watch this movie. When we go <laughs> watch them. But listen, when we go watch the movie, you'll see things in a movie that's starting to happen within life. Like, you know, one of them weird Hollywood movies that show you about MK Ultra and different right. stuff. Like, yo, that's right. what they doing. Mm. It was like that. And I, yo, bro, it was different. So, <laughs> you know, a lot of the things God would show me, God would show him. Got to the point where I was with him 24-7. I left home. Family thought I joined the cult and all of that. But the only thing was he was not telling me nothing that was going to harm me. He was not telling me anything that is anti-Christ. And everything was backed up by the Bible. Not the kind of Bible where you could take a scripture and make it say what you wanted to right, say. Right, but right. really backed up. And it's up to you to choose. I'm not making you do nothing. You know what I'm saying? So got from there and I got so strong in God that it was crazy, like different. Like I watched him. I give you a story. We was at the laundromat one day. I never locked my keys in the car, locked my keys in the car, which meant God had us to be there for a minute and talk to whoever. This is not a God who stands on the corner and goes, yo, yeah, what you think about the Lord? What you think about the Lord? He believes everything is appointment signed up by God. So if y'all talking, it's because God assigned that. It ain't like, yo, bro, you look like you down. What you think so about the Lord? by chance, right. Right. So he happened to be talking to this lady in the laundromat. After talking to like five other people who just happened to talk to him. He talking to this lady, she seemed like she, she dozing off the drugs. Like, so he asked her, you know, they talking, Jesus comes up. That's always his goal. Um, and she says something and say, you know, ask the rapper and point and mind you, he always tells me, which I knew already, but God is going to really have you. Your mission here with this music for him 
if you do his will, if you don't feel like you're going to do what you want to do, it's going to work out crazy. Demon, that's why I'm a firm believer, bro. And again, if the word don't back it up, I throw it out right here. But when it comes to familiar spirits, these are spirits. I don't think they they know like God knows or, or can just think or, or hear your thoughts, right? But I think they've been watching mankind forever. And they like they can shift into your uncle that died, and you think you're talking to the dead, but you're talking to the spirit, right? Um, I think that they know things. This is why even psychics, they won't tell you something most likely for the future unless it's probably bad death or something. And that's what the devil come to do. You you took it upon yourself to be guided by that. But they could tell you stuff like, yeah, uh, your grandmother, she used to love red candy. I, I'm hearing her. And really, the spirits just knew that's what she always did. Right. So the lady, though, goes, ask the musician, ask the rapper. He knows. Nobody told her I was a rapper. She never said she was a nothing. But if you want to know what God is at, sometimes you got to look for the enemy. Mm. The devil's not in the business of being where God is not. Because he mocks him and he copies him. So nine out of ten times, when you go where God told you to go, he's going to follow. The more you run towards God, the more he runs towards you. The more you run from God, the more the devil laughs, but he don't even got to walk next to you. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So and that, that wasn't the only occasion, though. We had went to a church one time because God sent us. Go see what they're doing over there. Watch what you see. So all kind of stuff. Pastor, one of the deacons, went in his little, you know what I'm saying, his truck, pulled out the Jack Daniels, took a sip, put right. it back in. You know, they they out there feeling good. As soon as we walked on the scene, he was like, I feel something in the air. Hum do boo boo boo. It ain't sound like tongues, but spirits is spirits, bro. Like they 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 active, you know what I'm saying? But um he said, I feel something. You do music. <laughs> and when he said that, oh but when he when he said that, my man, you know, my my big homie looked at me like. With the look like you think I'm playing when I say spirits, no. But God is so powerful that they all have to bow to him. Just as long as you submit your will to God. Well, submit to God's will. So, but I went through boot camp. It was like, and I hated it sometimes. I didn't hate it, but me and him clashed a lot because we was just alike. Very (laughs) stubborn, very stubborn. But I wasn't there to teach. I was there to learn. So a lot Mm -hmm. of things he would tell me, I'd be like, no, I'm telling you, it's not like that. It's like, well, how are you going to tell me that? Who told you that? Nah, but let's open the word. And that was his authority. And I'm like, all right, whatever. One time we got into it. He's like, we in the car. He's like, yo, God is just telling me that we need to be more thankful. We need to be more thankful. It was some things that God had did that I didn't thank God right away. But I felt like me and God is here. Like I was going to thank him. So we in the car, we start going at it. And I'm like, you know, I think you just... It's, it's almost like you make it seem like without you, I wouldn't know, I, like I won't have God or because of you, this happened or that happened. And he was like, I never said that. But again, I was getting offended in the Lord. So when we got to the shoe store, he's like, uh, you know, we talking and he's listening and he's like, that ain't God, I'm telling you. So he walks off, he said, matter of fact, I got one question and answer it honestly, then we'll know. When we left here, there, and there, God did this for you. Did you thank him? Did you even thank him before we got in here? I said, no. He turned around and said, now you know what I'm saying. Although to me, that's hardcore. Like, yo, nah, you're going too hard for the Lord. You're going too hard. But God is real. Like, God is, is living. Like, God is here now. You know what I'm saying? Like, Facts. You got to treat them like that. Because if somebody else did something for you, you'd be quick to be like, oh, yo, good looks, bro. Thanks. That's all it takes. Right. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. You got this, you got that, you got this. You, you know what I'm saying? God put you in this position. God put you in this. And you didn't thank him once. It's been about two hours already. You didn't thank him? Right. And to yeah. me, I'm like, yo, you fucking <laughs> like. And the, but the word says that, especially. right? To keep to keep giving thanks, right? Right. Thanks so, never stop. All time. Can't argue with a person like that. Right. And, and basically, it was just God really strengthening me too, because it's like the journey I'm gonna have you go on. It's not gonna be no room for anything less. Mm-hmm. You're gonna have to rely on me. 
Cause you gonna be around the wolves with what you doing. Right. Wow. Ain't no so, room for you to fight on your own. So with and the that, mute with the music stuff, right? It was like they kept mentioning it, and then you was like, all right, it's go time now. Nah, he told me before he put the battery in my back to rap for God, right? Yeah. He told me I had to drop five dollars. And I said, nah, you bugging out. You're not dropping five dollars. You gotta do that. God says, come as you are. Not yeah. that. <laughs> he, like, he, he said, all right, I'm showing you what God showed me, but all right, cool. Do you, all right? I you don't got to do, do nothing. But that be the reverse psychology in my eyes. Like, nah, he's, he's sick there, big fella. But no, he was serious. Like, I'm not going to make you do nothing. God told me to help and do whatever he had me to do. I'm only telling you what he said. Now, if you want to do what you want to do, you don't have to talk to me ever again. It won't hurt me. I wish you the best of luck. I'm like, thank you. But he like, you're going to use your real name. Now, how you use it, I don't know. God ain't telling me that. Mm. So God had gave me a dream one night. Weird, I never had a dream like it. He, he put out a grid. So it's basically like if I, if I, you see the background of this Zoom, like how it's gray. It's basically like when I, when I was in a dream, that's all I saw was a gray background but I saw pictures comparing. So you'll see one version of me, another version of me. You got to, in the dream, I had to pick. So you got to pick all the right ones. I had multiple choices of pictures, different things. The good version of something, the bad version, this, that. I picked everything right in life. But when it came to me, I picked the more cooler picture, the more worldly picture. Everything shambled, then I, I had the, the the multiple choice again. So basically, God was like, uh uh-uh, uh, that was the wrong <laughs> choice. Right? So I would see a lot of things come to pass in my dreams, and it just got crazy for me to the point where I was just like, this is really real. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I do better now. As William Cater, I was going to be Anthony Cater, William Anthony, but I'm like, Anthony, soft. You know what I mean? Oh, William oh, already oh, sounds. Yeah, you, you ain't. Know. <laughs> <laughs> Not to say like he that. He said, whoa. <laughs> Yo, bro, that's my name. <laughs> Anthony, though. Nah, he's Ant. Anthony. He's Ant. <laughs> like, yeah, 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 listen, yeah, listen, listen. <laughs> William Anthony. Yeah. Mark Anthony. Anthony yeah. Hamilton. I'm yeah, just yeah, saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Not when I'm going in the field for the Lord. And yeah, William, yeah. Is a, William already sounds like a butler. Not for nothing. <laughs> you can't be William and Anthony. William. And that's why I think people say Will. Because it just sounds better to them. Like, yeah, I'm not going to say William. Like, William. Like, yeah, that's William. But yeah. I think Kata saved me. Kata just sounds... People say Kata, but Kata. You're getting blown up. Yo, it's crazy. Kata, <laughs> to me, just it it, it meshed. It sounds great. Yeah. And I was just like, there's no other William Katas. I did this, and I have seen some of my posts get 90 plus comments. Again, it's not about none of that, right? And some people downplay it. And you even got the people who don't really get views that like to say stuff like that. But I like to say it is about that because you want to make an impact. It's not about the comments, but the fact that you got them, you know you're making an impact. And I'm not doing it by my own will. Mind you, I got a testimony on YouTube that got way more views than any of my videos, which goes to show you it's really real. I'm not here to just be a rapper, but I'm here to give God. I'm here to give you Jesus Christ in a way that you might have never heard. And if you did hear it, salute. But I'm here to do what God will have me to do. My competition is not local artists. I look at people like like Drizzy. I look at people like the Lil Uzis. I look at people like all these guys that's at the head of the beast, Jay-Z in particular, like all these guys. That's not my competition, but those are, that's who I clash with. Not that we got beef, but y'all the big influencers to the world. So I'm going to try my hardest. Now, I'm not going to try my hardest. God is going to make me be the biggest on top of biggest who's willing to not go by the rules and say what I have to say 
when I got to say and get right up out of there and do it again, get up out of there. Do it right. again, get up out of there. Unbiased. Yeah.